Hi everyone, I'm Rusty Dunn along with my friend and colleague, Head of Corporate Heritage Services, our Corporate Archivist, Lee Fosberg here. How are you? Hi Rusty, I'm doing well. Last time we saw each other, we mm -hmm. were talking about the building of the Panama Canal and our company's role in that, but mm -hmm. you've now uncovered some really interesting connections. I don't know if we call this the celebrity edition in terms of Caterpillar history, but we've got some historical figures, political figures, true celebrities mm -hmm. who have some really neat connections to using cat equipment, mm -hmm. big fans mm -hmm. of cat mm -hmm. equipment. So let's start though. I think our story starts in Russia. It does. It starts in 1912. And if you think about it, the Colt Caterpillar tractor, the gas version of it, kind of the, the modern day tractor, if you want to call it that, was invented in 1908. So we're talking only four years later and we have a global customer who happens to be the Tsar of Russia, Tsar right? Tsar Nicholas II. Yeah. And so there was a tractor show. It had European, it had other American tractors, and the Holt Caterpillar easily won the show. And that led to two sales to the Tsar. So where did they take it from there? How did they use these machines? Well, well, one is right, the Tsar himself was a major landowner within the country, so it was used for agricultural purposes, but they were also used to haul things and move things around. They were used for military purposes. But just a few years later, there was another thing, an auto show of all things in St. Petersburg, and that led to 40 more sales to other people within the country. So it really kind of shows you a couple things. One thing is the Holt Caterpillar tractor was a global product. It was sold to countries across the globe. And you know what? Some of those people happen to be notable and famous people. Excellent, very interesting, mm -hmm. Czar. Who would have thought that yeah. connection to mm -hmm. the Tsar? This next person, I think everyone's heard of, well, Charles Lindbergh, and yep. I wasn't aware of the, what you're about to tell us here in terms of our historical connection to Charles right, Lindbergh. Right, right. Well, you know, Caterpillar is in the Peoria area, and Lindbergh had gone to Peoria and had done flying of airmail. Um, but you know, his, his claim to fame in 1925, right, he flew from New York to Paris. But what's really interesting is, you remember, this was early aviation. And in general, runways were made up with dirt, right? Well, what equipment moved dirt? Ours, right? Absolutely. And also, CAD equipment would move these early airplanes. Pulling the planes around. Yeah, into position. And they, they pulled uh, Lindbergh's plane. And one of the things that's really documented in our collection is Lindbergh ended up going on and working for TWA, that's right. the airline. And one of their first flights, he actually flew the flight, right? He was kind of their spokesman. And we have photos of this plane being put in position by a Cat 10 track type tractor. Oh, that is excellent. Very, yeah. very cool connection. Yeah. One of my favorite genres of movie, Lee, are westerns, and I love mm -hmm. I love John Wayne, and I couldn't believe it when you brought up that there's a, a great connection and a great movie he made yeah. um, that features Caterpillar dozers. Yeah. Uh, what well, was based on a guy by the name of Red Adair, who put yep. out well mm -hmm. fires around yep. the world, yep. correct? Yep. Well, I mean, anything right with the Duke is good, right? Absolutely. Um, and well, the movie was called Hellfighters. Hellfighters. Right? Yep. It came out right. in the 60s. And Red Adair was famous for putting out these fires, and he was a big cat customer. And they were originally weren't going to use cat equipment. He was like, no, 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 no. We, if we're going to do this right, we have to use cat D7s and D8s. That's what I used. So they had to kind of pivot, and they went to our cat dealer in Houston, who was Mustang Cat, and they provided the proper machines. And you know, we have some great photos of John Wayne on this equipment you know, that was used for cat publications. So it's uh, kind of, we went down in history with the Duke. You can't get better than that. No, you can't. And, yeah. and it actually, there's a term for our, for actually for our dozers, our machines that were featured in that movie. Yes, well, they, they called them the tractor actor. Perfect. Let's stay out west, stay out in Hollywood. And there's an actor that some of you may have heard of, mm -hmm. famous, uh, perhaps his most famous film, arguably, I suppose, would be Gone with the Wind, but it got, his name is Clark Gable. Yep. Yep, Clark Cable. And this is a gentleman who, while he became a, the, the, the superstar of his day as an actor, he was a farm boy at heart. He was. And that's where the Caterpillar connection yeah. comes in. Well, he grew up on the farm, and when he became successful in Hollywood, he actually bought a ranch in the San Fernando Valley. He bought it, interestingly enough, from the person that started the Academy Awards, right? So Raul this is, Walsh is yes, that guy's yeah. name. Okay. And you know, yes. so this was the golden age of Hollywood, right? 
and he wanted to go back to the farm. It was a big orchard area. It's a big urban sprawl today. And we made orchard model machines. So we have a great photo of him on a Cat 15 track type tractor. Because as I understand it, this sort of orchard model, as we would call it, mm -hmm. it was a bit distinctive. Fenders, yes. it, yeah. it, it was that, a very specific model yeah. for, that, yeah. for that application. Very unique looking. So this next person is someone who, for me, perhaps probably at least my favorite connection as a kid growing up well, watched, him, watched him yeah. on ABC Wide World of Sports on Saturdays yeah. where he'd make these big motorcycle jumps. We're talking about Evil Knievel. Yes. Famous for making all sorts of jumps, just as famous for not making those jumps sometimes yes. successfully. Yeah. But uh, at the end of his career was going to make the biggest jump of all time. And um, we had a little something to do with that. Yeah. Evil Knievel. Yeah. Well, I, again, I have to admit, I had Evil Knievel toys. So, you know, this is one that I wanted in the bit. Probably so, worth a lot yeah, of money if you yeah, still had them today. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah. yes. And so this goes back to, again, to Basiris, one of our acquisitions. And he was a customer of Basiris. And he used Basiris cranes to move his pieces, equipment, part of the props of his act. So it only made sense he partnered with Basiris to do his jumping the Snake River Canyon. The Snake River Canyon out west back in 1974. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and actually that Bucyrus Crane, uh, they named it, it had a the, special the name. The Freedom Crane. It's called the yeah. Freedom Crane. Yeah. It's yeah. too bad the, the crane couldn't have been used to fish him out of Snake River Canyon after the jump failed, but that's, that's yeah. okay. That's we'll, another story. We'll take the history <laughs> where we can get it, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, he became Bucyrus' spokesman for a number of years. and. We also have photos of him at Con Expo in 1975. He was actually at a Con Expo yes, for, for, yeah. for us. Lee, awesome stories, great connections, and I'm sure as you guys keep digging in, you'll find other stories as well. But thanks a lot for sharing sort of the celebrity connections there with Caterpillar Equipment. As always, thanks, we Rusty. Love always love telling history stories for sure. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon.